Meet Korea's new fighter jet, the KF-21. The brand new KF-21 Borame Stealth Fighter, also known as the Fighting Hawk, launched from Seichan Air Base near Busan on July 19, 2022. Many experts are unsure if the KF-21 will revolutionize the military aviation market or if it will only serve as a costly marketing gimmick for the Korean defense sector. Over the years, problems have plagued this joint project between South Korea and Indonesia, and many have questioned its purpose and viability. However, the successful deployment of the T-50 and subsequent F-A-50 combat variant by KAI, or the Korean aerospace industry, has shown that they are more than capable of creating a supersonic jet. The future now looks bright for the Korean defense sector and terrifying for South Korea's adversaries thanks to a breakthrough into the European market with Poland purchasing 48 of the jet. The history of the KF-21, or better yet, the KF-X, began in the early 2000s, specifically in 2002, but it wasn't until one major event that it really took off. 2010 saw artillery fire exchanged over the 38th parallel as North Korea and South Korea were on the verge of war. The Korean government then recognized how urgently it needed a new plane. It continued to work on the KF-X program because it was now resolved to get some significant weaponry for a confrontation that had been brewing for close to 50 years. For this new Korean jet, several types were offered, including the C-103, a two-engine aircraft similar to the F-35, the C-203, which looked like a fighter from Europe, and the future J-20 from China. There was also the C-501, the single-engine variant that was the simplest. Ultimately, the C-103 design family was chosen because single-engine aircraft were unable to meet the government's specifications, while the C-203 design family was dropped because an agreement with possible European partners fell through. From this point forward, the C-103 family's development varied over time. Take note of how the design evolved from an F-35 to the F-22 Raptor. The C-109, which was given the go-ahead for the prototype phase, has earned the moniker Korean Raptor due to its remarkable resemblance to the F-22. But this jet also has a few more characteristics that really changed the game. Due to the fact that the KF-21 uses so many pre-existing templates from American jets and is powered by two GE F-414 engines, a derivative of the engines used for the Super Hornet, it really has quite similar dimensions to the F-35. And precisely that is the point. Because Lockheed collaborated with them on this development, the F-22 and F-35 are clearly recognizable in the design. Apart from some crucial parts like radar, IRST, target pods, and RF jammers, which the Koreans were forced to develop themselves and actually did brilliantly, Lockheed transferred a lot of technologies to the KF-21. However, this is the moment at which the project genuinely departs from the F-22 and F-35 design ethos. The strange thing about the KF-21 is that there isn't an internal weapons bay, which raises doubts about how stealthy it actually is. Instead, there are 10 hard points in all, three on each wing and four under the belly, where ornaments can be found. There have been rumors that internal weapons could be developed in the future, but we'll have to wait and see. Six KF-X prototypes were anticipated to be finished by the end of 2021 after KAI started production work on it in February 2019. These will go through four years of testing, and by the middle of 2026, the development process will be over. On April 9, 2021, the prototype was unveiled in front of the general public. Two ground test aircraft will be built in addition to the six airborne test aircraft. The initial test flight took place July 19, 2022. The aircraft flew off for 33 minutes from Seichun Air Base while flying the flags of South Korea and Indonesia. Before mass production starts in 2026, six flying prototypes, including two two-seat models, will fly 2,200 times. Air-to-air -air tasks will be the sole interim capability of 40 Block 1 jets and air-to-ground engagement will be added by 80 Block 2 jets starting in 2028. In the future, the KF-21 will get a hypersonic missile and an air-launched cruise missile, ALCM, that were both developed here in the United States. KAI displayed a model of the fighter's carrier-based KF-21N variant in September 2022. The Ministry of National Defense, MND, decided to stop funding the CBX, a projected small aircraft carrier that could fly STOVL F-35B jets in May 2022. 
Later, it was made clear that if a maritime jet fighter could be built domestically, the MND would think about buying a larger aircraft carrier design. To make the KF-21 carrier capable, KAI started a preliminary design concept in anticipation of this. To ensure safety and stability during takeoff and landing, the wings are 20% larger. They also fold for more compact storage. The airframe may do canobar and stowbar operations with structural modifications. KAI asserts that it would be able to build the KF-21N in a few years if the Republic of Korea Navy ROKN, decided to purchase an aircraft carrier large enough to operate fighters and identified a need. The KF-21 stealth performance in its current design is unclear and certainly does not place it in the same league as other fifth generation jets, making it more plausible that it is a 4 generation aircraft similar to the Eurofighter with a smaller radar cross-section. This, however, isn't really the problem because the Koreans were actually aiming for this and referred to it as a 4.5 gen jet, and here's why. Indonesia is a partner in this initiative and would prefer to purchase at least 50 of these planes rather than buy from Russia. Indonesia had previously purchased Russian aircraft such as the Su-27 SKM and the Su-30, but recently moved to purchase Western weapons as a result of pressure from the U.S. This also implied that they bought 42 French Rafales rather than the new Su-35s they had agreed to purchase from the Russians. Many countries looking to purchase Russian jets usually tended to favor more neutral providers while the conflict in Ukraine was still raging. Although they didn't particularly want to warm up to America, they were forced to stop buying from Russia. This is how recent French sales have increased dramatically and the reason why the Korean jet KF-21 can be the ideal aircraft product on the market. The KF-21 may prove to be the perfect jet for many nations eager to replace their ailing Cold War era fleets because of its likely lower price than that of its US or European rivals. The Koreans probably anticipate this as well. The Block 1 jets will have a limited ability to engage in air-to-ground combat. Additionally, Block 2's second run will have full multi-role capability and a subsequent slightly more covert development. The KF-21 is also expected to be equipped with a wide range of weapons, both American and European naturally, which poses some diplomatic difficulties. The notion that buyers should have the choice to go completely French with the weaponry, German, or even Israeli with the jets themselves, being from Korea is quite contentious. Fewer revenues for the big old USA would result from this, so it will be interesting to see how they respond to the intensifying rivalry among its friends. Even though Lockheed contributed to the development of the jet, they have recently stopped supplying their fellow American arms producers.